First Lady, to all ministers, uh, deacons, officers, members, visiting friends. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I invite your attention again uh, to two passages of Scripture. One is taken from 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15, and the second will be just a few books over in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. So I'll allow you an opportunity to find those two passages. Ephesians chapter 15, we we'll look at verses 10 and 11, and then from the book of Ephesians, we will lift up just one verse, verse 8. Amen. We thank God again for this privilege. Amen. Amen. Our prayer is that you will breathe afresh on this word. Amen. As you find that passage, if you have found those passages, won't you stand in reference to the reading of God's word? I don't intend to be before you long, but just pray that I'm strong. Amen. Amen. First of all, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they are. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. Now turn it over to Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Oh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give us a word, Doc. On uh, last uh, evening, on last night, many of us had an opportunity to uh, go out and view the uh, film The Grace Card. Man. And it was a compelling story that illustrated how. Everything can change in the blink of an eye. That's why we need to always be prayerful. Always be found doing what the Lord would have us to do because things can change in an instant. A character in the movie whose name was Matt McDonald, he was a white police officer who lost his son who was struck by a car that happened to be driven by a black man as he was trying to escape the police officers. I'm not going to tell the whole story for those who still want to see it, but this tragedy caused him so much pain that everything in his life was adversely affected, including his love for his family, his job performance, and it hindered him from developing a relationship with God. Because of his anger and his bitterness inside him, he had nightmares about this tragedy that had uh, taken the life of his son. He couldn't get it out of his mind. His young son, who he was teaching to ride a bicycle, he got struck by this guy as he was trying to escape the police. So it made for a somewhat of a combustible situation when, when Mac is now partnered with Sam Wright, who happens to be a black police officer. And he was a rising star on the police force. And it was tough for them to to, to make this relationship work as, as, as Sam was also a pastor. But the powerful message in the movie is that we have an opportunity each day to build relationships yes. and to heal wounds uh, that, that have, have, have happened in our lives by extending and receiving the gift of God's grace. These two officers learned that it was better to play the grace card than the race car. Right. And after receiving this gift of grace, everything in this man's life changed. And I want to know the same thing can happen for you. Yeah. So the Lord led me uh, to this uh, subject today as we talk about the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. We pray with you. The gift of grace. Starting today, I want you to no longer consider yourself as merely members of this church. I want you to consider yourself as partners. Amen. We're partners in this ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're partners. We all have an equal share in this thing. We, and, and, and until we all are partnering and doing what we're supposed to do, we will never be as effective as we should. 
True. And that's the reason we're encouraging everyone to get actively involved. Somebody say actively. Actively. Get actively involved in ministry because we want this ministry to grow to its full potential. God is preparing us to. He's preparing us to do a mighty work within the community. And the gift of grace is going to be one of the key elements that we need to make it successful. All right. The Amplified Version of, uh, of this verse that we read from Ephesians 2 and 8 reads like this. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. It is not of your own doing. It came not through your own strife, but it is the gift of God. Somebody said, thank God for the gift. Thank God for the gift. In addition to receiving the gift of grace, uh, we are increasing our faith as we study the word of God. Because we know here that faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith will go, grow strong as we as we go out into the world to, to work. And because we need it strong if we're going to be uh, successful and productive right. in doing the job that wants us, God wants us to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. So our faith has to be strong. We must keep the faith. Because as we go out, the adversary is going to be after us. As we go out, the adversary is going to put all kinds of things in our path to make our job more difficult. But we know that we must keep the faith. Amen? Amen. Romans 12 and 3 tells us that every man, everyone, every person has been dealt a measure of faith. And our faith is based upon believing that Christ died for our sins. That he was buried and rose on the third day. And because he got up, we can get up. Oh, y'all are ready. Right. Because he got up. We can get up from any situation that tries to keep us down. As I was preparing uh, for this message uh, about this grace gift, uh, it was readily apparent to me that we need both grace and mercy in order to be saved. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because grace takes away the guilt, but mercy takes away the misery. Grace takes away the guilt. But mercy takes away the misery. When you think about it, the wish should come first, grace or mercy, it's kind of a, a, a paradox. Because you can't really figure out uh, uh, why. Because logically, mercy precedes grace. Because God have to, had to have mercy upon us to extend his grace to us. Does that make sense? Amen. But from the spiritual perspective, grace precedes mercy because we must accept God's grace through faith before we can receive mercy to be relieved from our misery. All right. Amen, All right. amen. Grace always precedes peace. We cannot have peace until we have experienced forgiveness of our sins through God's unmerited favor of grace. And that brings us full circle back to grace. Listen again to the passage from 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me. That means it was given to me. I didn't earn it and I know I don't deserve it. It was given to me. It was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than all. Yet not I. But the grace which was with me. The Apostle Paul was letting his audience know that he owed everything that he had accomplished all right, to the grace of God. All right. God's grace which was given to him. He didn't earn it. God just loved him enough to give it to him. I thank God for the gift. I praise God for the gift. When I think about the, the, the gift of grace, I have to think about God's love for me. His genuine agape love for me. How he loved me, not because of, but in spite of. Because I don't know about you, I made some mistakes along the way. I've thought some things that I shouldn't have thought. I, I've said some things that I shouldn't have said. I've done some things that I know I shouldn't have done. But every time I made it, I said, God, I'm sorry. He welcomes me back with open arms. That ain't nothing but grace. Nothing but grace. We will never understand the total love, depth of God's love because it's immeasurable. It's immeasurable. So how can we, being the finite beings that we are, how do we come to understand this infinite and unfathomable gift of God's grace? Well, 1 
first you got to get to know God. And to get to know God, you got to get in His Word. You got to study His Word. We got to meditate on His Word how often? Day and night. And the more you study His Word, the more you find out about God. The more you find out about what He wants to do, what He's able to do. And when I get to know Him more, then you begin to have experiences that will assist you in recognizing the magnitude of this gift of grace. So I wish I could understand it. I, I worked on this long and hard, Brother Bell, trying to come up with narrative phrases. That's a predator word, but I can't really explain how deep this thing is, how wild this thing is, how high this thing is. Huh. When we look back over our lives and we recall some of the stuff that we all did, you can better understand the lyrics of that song that said, My soul. Suffering with. 